Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here, osatennis360.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to win more matches without hitting millions of balls, which sounds impossible, but I'll promise you it's not, and in fact, uh, it's a lot easier than you might think when you start doing the things uh, we're going to talk about today. And this little presentation that I put together for you um, was made because I was having a lot of struggles uh, as a competitive tennis player. Um, every time I'd try to play singles, uh, my sort of own mind would get in the way and I would start uh, telling myself things like I wasn't fast enough, my technique wasn't good enough, I couldn't hit uh, you know, certain shots, I didn't have a big serve. And so I thought the only solution, clearly, was to go out there and practice a bunch more. Came to find out that that is not the truth. And if you're wondering uh, if all of those things are true, I can assure you they're not, uh, which is great. Before we get started, uh, if you are a competitive tennis player, you got to know how to close out matches. Uh, and I've created, with my business partner, a PDF called The Five Biggest Mistakes Competitive Amateur Tennis Players Make when they're trying to close out those close matches. Uh, and if you would like that, uh, you can download it for free just by clicking the link down below in the description. It'll take you over to a little opt-in page uh, where you can grab that. Okay, so um, let's get right into the meat of this little presentation here. I apologize for not being on court with you. Uh, just got a little bit dark, and I figured, you know what? The old uh, slideshow is never a bad idea. So. The first thing we've got to do is to have a plan, and specifically a good plan, right? So I talk to a lot of players that come to me, and when I ask them, you know, when you go into a competitive match, you know, what is your plan? Uh, and most of them will kind of look at me and say, well, you know, I, I try to out-hit my opponent, or, you know, I try to get everything back, or I try to hit a big serve. And... Um, those are, uh, those are plans, but I wouldn't constitute them as good plans. Uh, those are kind of vague ideas of how uh, to construct a point and how to go out and play. So we got to know what a good plan actually is. And that gets us right into probably the biggest aha I've had in the past um, two years. And that's when we want to start playing in two-shot sequences. And, um, and I'll tell you why we want to do that in a second. But first, you've got to know what is the problem with playing one shot at a time. You hear that phrase a lot, you know, play one shot at a time, one match at a time. And what they're trying to get you to understand is that you want to be fully present in that shot. Um, but as you'll see in a second, uh, that's very limiting um, if you're not thinking in two shot sequences because playing one shot at a time is tends to be you hit one ball, you see what happens, your opponent sends the ball back, and all of a sudden you react to it. Um, and what ends up happening is you end up not being totally sure of what you're going to do next because you haven't thought one shot in advance. So I'm not saying think three and four shots ahead at a time, but we want to certainly be thinking two shots at a time. The second problem with that is when you're playing one shot at a time, you tend to go big. You try to hit a big, uh, you know, forehand close to the line because you're not you're not thinking strategically about how you're using mat, uh, uh, your shots. And by the way, this is exactly how I played for probably 20 years. You know, when you watch tennis on TV and you see these epic shots, you kind of think, oh man, that's amazing. I'm going to do that. But I can assure you that all of the best players are thinking in two-shot sequences. And that's what we want to do. right? So if you're playing with one shot at a time, there's no real method to the madness. You're reacting. You're going for big shots. You're going close to the line. And that's a really good way uh, to miss. So what are the advantages of two-shot sequences? Well, really, it covers all of your bases. First of all, it sets up and hurts your opponent when you can think of two-shot sequences. So there's only three things that we're ever doing on a tennis court when we're, when we're in a point. We're either neutralizing a big shot, we're setting up a shot, or we're hurting our opponent. 
So that gives us the three possible situations in our two-shot sequences. So when you start using these two-shot sequences, you're going to be able to instinctively know what situation you're in and whether you need to neutralize and set up or set up and hurt or neutralize and hurt. Okay, and the last thing, the advantage of two-shot sequences is now there's conviction in your movement. Okay, so if you're used to playing two-shot sequences, what ends up happening is you get your body into a rhythm of movement that facilitates the next shot. So a perfect example would be like an approach shot and a volley, right? If you've trained that, if you've practiced it, when you hit your approach shot, you come in right behind it aggressively, you know exactly where you need to go, and you are pre-programmed to hit the volley where you want to hit it. So there's a, now a conviction in your movement. There's more certainty in what you're doing. And by the way, this is, again, is not something I discovered until about two years ago. Um, so this is massive. If we start training in two-shot sequences, you will start suddenly start to see that you begin thinking more strategically, and your opponent, who probably is not doing this, is going to be at a major disadvantage. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to start to think of our training time as leverage. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't have that much time, unfortunately, to be on the tennis court a week. I'm not like, you know, training like Nadal, who's on the court for 20 hours a week. Um, I'm lucky if I get an hour a day. And most of the time, because my wife's got things for me to do, you know, my daughter, you know, has, has stuff that we have, you know, we ride her skateboard around taking the dog on a walk, you get it, right? We just don't have that much time to train. So we want to make sure that when we are on the court to practice or train, that we're doing it in a very highly leveraged way and we're very strategic about how we train. So how do most people practice? Well, you've probably done this. I know I've done this. You'll have long rallies from the baseline. And a lot of times it won't go much past that. You'll just go out and you'll hit for an hour, which is totally fine, by the way. I'm not knocking that. I love to do that, you know, especially with my wife. It's something we really enjoy. Um, but if we're talking about training to win more matches, then long rallies from the baseline are not going to be very helpful because only 10% of the points are beyond nine shots. And that's specifically the, the way that you're training is for those extended rallies. So 70% of the points are over in four shots or less. So if we're training to win, it makes sense to train uh, two-shot sequences, right? So they'll hit long rallies from the baseline. Maybe they'll come up and hit a few volleys. They'll hit some serves, and then they'll go out and play. Again, nothing wrong with that uh, if that's what you enjoy. But if you're looking to win, uh, that is not an ideal way to train. So what you want to do instead is rehearse strategic two-shot sequences and do it over and over and over again um, until you can execute them uh, even under pressure. Okay, so this is the big one, right? So everybody can feel great on the practice court, but why is it that when we get into a match, all of a sudden, you know, our skills go away and we lose our way? Um, and it's because of pressure, right? So what we need to be able to do is add pressure into our training because at the end of the day, Pressure is neither good or bad, but it's what you make of it, right? It's, it's pressure doesn't have any meaning in and of itself. It's if we tell ourselves, oh, pressure is bad, I play worse under pressure, I get nervous, um, or if pressure is your best friend, right? And you thrive under pressure. And at the end of the day, it's the ultimate acid test. I think it was Brad Gilbert who said, you'll find out exactly where your skills are when you're under pressure. Uh, and that's absolutely true. And you know that we don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training and pressure will tell us exactly where those skills are. Now, the good news is pressure gives you all you need from a biological standpoint to perform at your best. And I learned this from uh, my business partner, Mark Jeffrey, that under pressure, you get a dump, a chemical dump in your brain and body of testosterone, adrenaline, cortisol, norepinephrine, all of these amazing chemicals 
that sharpen your eyesight, that get blood to your muscles, that prepare it to fight or flight. So that's a really good thing because that can actually help you. Um, but the bad news is uh, you're either controlling pressure or pressure is controlling you. And what I mean by that is if you haven't trained under simulated pressure repeatedly, if you're not sort of uh, inoculated to it, just learn that word, <laughs> then it will control you um, when you need to thrive under it most. So what we need to be able to do is add pressure to our training. And how do we do that? Well, there's a few ways to do that. Uh, we teach this in our 30-day program called One Point Away. We use targets, we use um, scoring systems, and we use like physical exercise. So really quickly, targets are big because they're very binary. You're either hitting your target or you're not. And you can't tell your coach or yourself, I'm going for that target over there and then hit it there and then miss and then say, well, I wasn't really going for that target, right? As soon as you set up a target, you set up a goal in your mind and it bump starts you into flow, which is where you play your best. The scoring, obviously, the scoreboard is big because when there's scoring involved, um, that brings us closer to what we're going to have in a match. And then physical exertion could be you're in the middle of a drill and then all of a sudden you decide to do, um, you know, a sprint from one end of the baseline to the net, back pedal back, and now you go try to execute uh, the next drill. Because that's going to simulate what you have in a match, right? In a match, you're not kind of coasting along and then all of a sudden get to hit your serve whenever you want or your return. You may have just come out of a 15-shot rally, you're winded, and unless you've trained under that condition where you have to be able to recover quickly and uh, kind of catch your breath and go again, um, then when you get into a match and you're under those circumstances, it's not going to be so good. So just to recap, uh, what you don't want to do is rally a bunch from the baseline. If you're looking to win matches, you want to train in specific two-shot sequences um, over and over again, and then ultimately start adding pressure. Um, and you will start winning more matches um, while your opponent sits there and, and rallies or does little to nothing at all. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it for you. A little bit different than what we normally do out on court together. Um, but hopefully you got some great value out of this. Again, if you're a competitive tennis player and you're looking to win more matches, feel free to download this free PDF. It's called The Five Biggest Mistakes that competitive amateur tennis players make when they're closing out uh, those 50-50 matches. And again, this is a major aha uh, for me. A lot of the stuff that is in this uh, free report was not stuff that I was really aware of. And then once you read it, it's about a 13-page document. It will give you some insights into um, what is required of you to close out the matches uh, that you know you should be winning. So thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you sticking with me through the end. I really appreciate your support. Let me know down in the comments what you thought and what videos you'd like for me to make you in the future uh, so I can help you. And with that, uh, if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor, click the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications if you want more stuff like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.